so this is part two of manual swapping the GTP which not a real GTP it's a clone car where basically I took everything off a of GTP but I mean no one would know the difference unless they saw that the badges sit in a slightly wrong spot by an inch or whatever um, but it's not up badged because it has all the GTP stuff on it it was like added a head-up display and all the other electronics you get these cars optioned really weird, so sometimes it makes it difficult to do these types of things. But either way, more importantly, uh, we're going to get into what you have to do. And uh, this isn't a how-to. Like I said on the other video's description, this is a here's how I did it. Figure it out for yourself because this is such a, like, I don't know how to explain it. There's so much to this. And there's so many differences between different W bodies and other stuff where you can't say for sure that there's one right or wrong way to do it. All the ways are wrong. Um, because it didn't come like that from the factory if you ask certain people so just if it works it works you know so basically uh, first thing we got to look at is the firewall once you have the dash removed like I didn't really show in the last video oops um, you're gonna have this wiring harness and also I believe the uh, I don't think it's a hood release cable it might be a, I think it is the hood release cable actually so you're gonna have that what you're going to want to do is, because you have to use this hole that's already there for the clutch master cylinder, is you're going to want to drill a hole above it. So, what I did was I literally just came with uh, this guy right here. And yes, I'm still using corded tools. I have a Firestorm uh, Black & Decker set, but those batteries finally died after probably 15 or 20 years, however old they are. And uh, I ordered an adapter to put DeWalt batteries on them because I'm going to use them until they don't work no more. But anyway... So what I did was I drilled a hole above and I drilled it way too small, but I did drill it in the correct spot. So for demonstration purposes, what I did, you can see the piece of the mounting plate in there. Um, I literally just shoved it above, kind of let it run itself in a little bit. It was a lot smoother than that one. There was actually metal there. And uh, basically let it sit through and made sure that the end of it was on this lip because the end of this lip is where the actual firewall starts and you don't really want to drill into that because there's two pieces of metal overlapped on each other and I think there's some sort of weather sealing between them and uh, you don't want to create a spot where water is going to get between the two and whatever but uh so the idea with that is also you do have to tear out part of that rubber liner it's just for sound dampening I believe but that uh once you drill this hole and it's actually the correct size, which in this case it's not, and I now have to figure out a way to enlarge it in that very tight space, uh, that harness you're just going to slide up into it and it's going to leave a round hole at the bottom, which is going to be shared with the harness and the master cylinder. Um, but you're going to slide that up so it's still in pretty much the same spot. You're not really straining any cables or wires. No one's had any problems with it. Um, and then we're going to grind that metal plate down so that the master cylinder can sit flat because it is kind of fluted outwards and uh we're going to want to leave a little bit of it, a bit of it sticking up and here's why so this piece is sort of fluted outwards for lack of better words uh because there's a lip on that grommet that sticks through that grabs onto it so you're only going to want to grind the bottom most section of it out and leave the middle there so that that grommet still has something to grab onto and the reason you want that flat is because the master cylinder is going to be sitting right against that. And what's going to happen is um, you're going to leave a gap and it's going to be really hard to seal it because you got to use like, I don't know, I might experiment with some foam mat put between or a rubber mat or even uh, like RTV would be fine. I mean, it's not like water ever gets to this part of the firewall, but it's more for exhaust fumes. And again, I'm going to say do this at your own risk with that because you got to be real careful. Um, and like s smells if you're burning oil and things like that it's really just to keep noise out and smells and gases and stuff so you're gonna want to have that seal up really nice so that, that's why you want it to be flat you don't want to leave a gap and you also don't want it to be completely flat um, because that grommet still has to stay in the place uh, fatal error I made here so don't wear tinted safety goggles when you're cutting something in the dark because 
Well, I don't know what these wires do. It looks like it leads over to that. I thought it was a windshield washer harness. That's what I read, but uh, that's only part of it. Uh, the rest of it leads to like the trans. Well, I guess that doesn't matter that much, but there is some stuff that is important, I believe, that runs through this. By that, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the power supply for like everything. Because I don't see anywhere else where wires run through the dash. Yeah, that, that'd be it. That's awesome. I, I just did something great. So basically now what I have to do is I have to untape this whole harness and go through everything that's been cut, which only two wires have been fully severed. I see two that are... I'm probably going to cut and splice them. Really, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six wires that are... No. Yeah, five wires that are damaged. So I'm just going to use some of those uh, crimp connectors with heat shrink on them. Yes, I could solder them, but really it's... I've never had them fail me. As long as you crimp them with a proper crimping tool and don't just get them with lineman pliers. Actually, that's not right, because some lineman pliers do have a crimping tool built in. But yeah, just don't don't just like clamp them together. And then hit them with a heat gun, too, because there's heat melt inside of those. That'll, that'll work awesome. So, yeah, don't be a moron like me and do what I just did. It could have been worse. Those are uh, refrigerant lines, and... I don't know if R134A is flammable, but uh, other refrigerants are, and you don't know what the car has been messed with by the previous owner if you're not the first one, so, yeah, lesson learned. So, I fixed my uh, little wiring error, and by wiring error, I mean being a complete dumbass. So, I chose these things, they're what, 22 to 16 gauge. They're perfect for this wire size. Really, there's a range of wires that goes through here. Um, and I like them because they crimp really tight for the most part, and they're not perfect, but you know, they're good. And then uh, they've got heat shrink, but that heat shrink is also lined with hot glue, which you can actually see kind of poking out through there. So you've not only crimped the wire in place, you've got a mechanical connection, you also have a glue which i guess it's hot glue so it's not really as much a chemical thing it's it's two mechanical connections we'll just put that so these are really strong connectors um so this should hold just fine i've just got this in here while i was grinding so i wouldn't hit anything so you see now i've slid this grommet up there's a little bit of stress on this uh hood release cable i'm gonna see if i can maybe reroute it through this grommet that doesn't do anything or uh, maybe I can just kind of have it chill up above the, like alongside the master cylinder like that when I mount it. Because this hole right here is what we're going to use for our master cylinder. But even with this grommet slid all the way up into its spot, it's looking like I'm having a hard time uh, having a big enough hole for the master cylinder. Mind you, it's just a rod. It's literally just a rod and the master cylinder is flush with it. But I'm thinking about just cutting this like right along here. But then there's nothing to hold this from chafing against and it, is, it is a metal cable like it's it's plastic outside but a metal like thing w wound inside of it so I, I've got to look at my options here but uh that's kind of where I'm at and I'm happy with how the wiring repair went I'm probably gonna have to wrap it in something like uh, friction tape like this see so, yeah, how this looks like super professional and nice uh, I think it looks better than the factory stuff. So, think about friction tape on this just to make it look good. And the nice thing is friction tape really sticks to itself better than anything. So I can undo it, and I don't, I don't have to worry about it picking up dirt because I can't just wind it on the roll. So, yep. Yeah, anyway, that's a problem for the future, but it's kind of what we're looking at here with the this thing. The point that I'm at now, I've cut out like half of that thing that grommet which gives me a considerable amount of space to work with and if you see there's a tiny hole that i've drilled now under the advisory of some people in uh well somebody in the 3800 or sorry the w body manual swap group uh i've been told to drill the hole lined up as best as i can with the other hole next to it for the brake brake booster or sorry brake pedal bracket so I tried and I missed it because the drill went into hammer mode <laughs> and uh, skipped. So I'm either just going to say screw it and drill into it. I guess, I mean, it does line up with it, but just just not all the way. Like it'll be touching if you draw a straight line across them, but it won't be perfectly lined up. But either way, I got to drill a hole there. And the reason I started here was because I 
put the uh, master cylinder up to it for comparison. And I, that's where I knew where to start hole one. And hole two is going to be kind of weird because it's going to be half drilled, meaning it's going to be right on that lip. So uh, it's going to be very difficult to actually get it to correctly line up. And I ended up deciding that I don't want to uh, grind all that out first. I want to mount the master cylinder and see how that fits. Because if it fits fine without grinding it, and it sits relatively flush, I think I'll be fine. But yeah, I wanted to drill a smaller pilot hole from the outside. Also, because this ear right here, I wanted it to be past that line. But if it doesn't fit right and if it has any bit of play, I'm grinding that all the way down. I just don't want to use the grinder if I don't have to. So, yeah. And as for that uh, cable, hell, it's just going to have to kind of sit right under the brake booster. There's a rubber grommet on it, like a smaller one. There's a grommet within a grommet, so I'm going to use that smaller one right there. You can see it just kind of hanging there. Um, and I'm going to put that right on the, in between the brake booster and the, or sorry, the master cylinder for the clutch and the firewall, that hole down there, and with some silicone around it because it's going to have to be weatherproofed, I think I'll be okay. So that's where I'm at right now. And then once those two holes are drilled, I'll actually be able to mount my uh, pedal and uh, then figure out what I'm going to do for the other side because you can't just mount it through this. You'll break something if you do. You'll bend the firewall probably. Or, well, at least just this little metal plate here and I really don't want to do that because it looks like it goes all the way to where the AC lines are, this one plate. And uh, that doesn't look like fun to replace or have to redrill. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. So, uh, Master cylinders right there. It's not actually mounted and it's just sitting there and boy did I cut way way too much out of that bushing like it's like an inch between that and the master cylinder and uh, starting to think I know I'm overthinking it, but I don't know what I'm gonna do to seal that up other proof and exhaust gas proof and not that this exhaust leaks anyway, but you never know the EGR pipes get a little excited sometimes and melt uh, so there it is sitting there though I see now why it has to be trimmed down because the issue with these pedals is that they're way too long and I thought it was just a cosmetic thing because you don't want your brake and your clutch to be misaligned like you still drive it fine but uh yeah it hits the floor before it bottoms out so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that we're just gonna cut it and overlap it but that's a different story this is going to take two people because there's like, I push that in and it comes back out and it's, I don't know what it's pressing against. I'm thinking it might be that rubber bushing, but if I cut any more of it out, it's not going to fit. So, um, if anything, me bolting this piece in with that there, will just keep it tighter. So, or yeah, it'll keep that rubber bushing tighter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have probably my dad or one of my friends or something come over and push in on that while I put the bolts in a, or the nuts in on the other side and I, I might not even have to unbolt it again because the plan is I have a TIG welder that doesn't throw any sparks so what I think I might do is I'm going to cut it or well I guess I'll mount the brake pedal box first uh, obviously trim it to make it fit that and then I'm going to cut the brake or the clutch pedal and weld it to line up with the brake pedal. Uh, and I'm gonna have a welding blanket down, and I mean, it's TIG, so really, if you do it right, you have to mess up really bad for there to be sparks when you're doing TIG. So I'm just gonna have a welding blanket and a fire extinguisher, and I should be fine. Because I don't wanna have to take this apart again. Oh yeah, plenty of uh, ventilation, because chemicals. But yeah, I really don't wanna have to take this back out. And also, I think for this mount here, I originally thought that it was going to touch against this top part, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just weld a flat plate to it, drill a couple holes all the way through, and have bolts go through that. But that's not going to work unless I, like, extend it out, and then I don't know if that's going to be stable enough. So it's got this bolt from the factory, this bolt hole. I'm going to see if I can get it, if it just so happens that it lines up with anything on that. If not, I'm going to build a bracket coming off of that. It's going to go to that. So, I don't know, maybe I can weld something on top of here, and it'll just... It'll just go into one of those holes where the steering column also mounts, but then again, you see there's these aluminum inserts that also act as a spacer, and then the steering wheel is going to be crooked, and, and then these are 
from my understanding, if it's not 1932, these are collapsible steering columns, and I'm sure they mount in some special way, and uh, tampering with that isn't really a good thing to do in the case of an accident. So I want to have pretty much all the steering column mounting be the same, or if let's say I have to modify anything on it, I want it to sit in the same position that it did before. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, but I'm at a stop for now, and then we'll go from there and see what uh what's going on. But yeah, that's um something. So definitely cut a bit too much out of the grommet. However, I have the clutch master cylinder mounted uh, but I'm having some troubles here so it all goes together and everything but uh, the issue kind of lies more on the inside than the outside so you can see it's mounted pretty much flush like there is not much of a gap between that uh, but so so we're going to hop forward here a little bit because I forgot to film a part, but I'll show how I did it, uh, the cutting out the brake pedal box. But what I have to do here is I have to trim, well not really trim, but shorten without taking away any material this uh, brake pedal, or sorry, clutch pedal. So normally this would go like this, and then this would go on the end of it, but this hits the floor. And so there's like almost no space to push it all the way in. So what I'm doing is, uh, I saw a picture of somebody, I'm just going to weld this like that, and then weld this because if I flip this forward, the brake, uh, the clutch pedal itself is going to be like facing up at me, and I want it to be more outward. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a picture that I was shown, again, in the uh, WBody F23 swap Facebook group. I'm going to use a picture from there to clock this in the correct position because somebody showed me how and uh, just gonna tack weld it because I don't want it to I don't want to weld it all the way and it's slightly off I'm gonna tack weld it enough so I can still bend it like just a little tack and then reinstall the pedal or just kind of push it up against the dash where it sits pull it into the right position and then finish welding the whole bead across and I don't want to butt weld it because I don't want issues with I don't, I don't have a good enough jig to set this in to keep it from flexing and warping and stuff. And I know it's not that big of an issue, but I also just think a, a lap weld is stronger than a butt weld in this case. So that's kind of the plan, because I'm going to go all around, not just, you know, from both sides. Same with this guy, because it's like, I don't know, I feel like having your clutch pedal break while you're driving would be just at least a little bit inconvenient. Because, like, you'd probably still be able to operate your clutch, but it'd be from up here and you wouldn't have any leverage and it'd be hell trying to drive it through traffic. Another thing is I noticed that you have to have this maxed all the way in for it to press the uh, safety switch in for the uh, cruise control. And so to avoid any issues with this thing pulling off because it's already come off before, uh, I cut this and moved it forward, which seems stupid, but... This thing literally just pulls out and pushes in. So I don't want any actual force of the pedal pressing against this. I don't want these plastic threads to decide uh, whether or not this end stays on. Because what I've had happen is on my Malibu, I had it set up like that where this piece was holding the clutch pedal. And one day I let go of the clutch and it pushed the uh, this thing out and the push rod came out of the off the pedal and I didn't have a clutch. So to avoid the situation, this was a great design 20 years ago when this plastic was in its prime condition, but I just don't trust it now. So I'm modifying the bracket instead for this plastic piece to be what stops it, just the blue piece, not the piece that threads in because this is in here strong. So what I've done is I've cut it, like slotted it here so I can bend it. And then that way when this pedal comes out, it pushes against there and I can adjust that. I can weld a washer to it just so that's what presses the switch in. I'm not too worried about the switch's functionality as much as I am having a clutch that works because having your engine rev bomb to six grand when you press your clutch in on the highway is still better than all of a sudden losing your clutch and basically having to shut your car off to stop. So I guess take your car out of gear, I should say, but I'd rather not do that. So, I mean, this this can be adjusted different ways. I'm gonna weld it uh, right here, 
and I don't know, maybe I can cut it here, bend it back out, and then weld that too. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do, just so this face is straight towards. All right, so here's where I'm at. I've welded this, take that off. I've welded this just kind of barely. It doesn't have to be that great. And also, um, well, it's, it's not very structural. It's only kind of structural and that's strong enough for it, you know, not to be an issue. So um, now that I've got that to the point where I want it to, uh, I've also tack welded these just so that they're still like bendable if need be. I went off a picture and if this doesn't fit right, I'll just bend it into position and permanently weld it. But yeah, I'm using these old welding rods that are like, they've been exposed to moisture for like five years. They came from my welding class. My welding class teacher threw them out because they were like old. They sat out exposed to moisture for like three years. There's a different teacher that uh, left them out. Uh, and they were behind a bunch of stuff and then he found them and then threw them away and then they've been sitting in my garage for two years or so so yeah it's like five years of moisture and welding rods there's a reason that a lot of professional like welding facilities have dryers like these ovens you put the rods into if they sit out to get all the moisture out because if there's moisture in them uh, they don't stick they'll they don't weld correctly they stick and well it's super convenient that uh i'm out of gas so i can't dig it which sucks but it is what it is. Uh, that and also I suck at welding. So I'm, I'm much better with TIG than I am with stick. I don't know. MIG and TIG, MIG is just easy because it's a hot glue gun basically. Stick, you're like trying not to make it get stuck at the same time and whatever. And I mean, once you get it going, you've then got slag that you have to deal with. And if you run it too cold or too hot or whatever, if you run it at the wrong temp basically, slag. That slag, which is this, which comes from melting this outer layer of flux, will uh, kind of impregnate the metal, and then it all becomes one thing, and then it's not a strong weld. With TIG, it's like the manual transmission of welding, because you know, I guess it's kind of themed to what's going on in the video. You control everything, every little thing you can control all at once. So it's not like your electrode is also your filler; it's all separate. So. Yeah, that's my excuse to why these welds suck, and it's just got to be good enough to hold. Alright, so I found myself some 6013 rods, which weld quite a bit nicer, and uh, it looked, I had to weld over the old weld, so it didn't look that great, but then you get to spots where, like, it was just the 6013, and the weld's actually straight through in an actual weld. But uh, you can see I messed it up and had to re-weld it, and I think I've said weld more times than years I've been alive, but... Yeah, there it is. That's the shape of it. So now I have to find a situation to mount the top part because these two aren't going to be enough. It's a plastic master cylinder. It'll shatter it if I only use those two bolts as much as the pedal does go down. So I found this bracket right along here. Like right along this is where the uh, pedal, the brake pedal box has been cut out. So I'm thinking... If I cut this piece out, and I already marked out where I'm going to put it, but I'm going to double check it. If I cut this piece here, this is already braced. It's kind of like an angle iron type of deal. So I could just butt weld it to that around that hole and uh, have it sit flat against the bracket, drill a hole, put a nut on one side, bolt on the other, and then I have myself a proper support for it. So, yeah, it's the plan. I just got to cut this here and just, again, tack it into place and stick it under the dash and see how it fits. Welding, you do get a lot of uh, flexing and, like, even if you brace stuff into place, metal bends. You can tack it to keep it all in the same spot, but metal, especially like this, like, this section might bend out of the way. So I'm thinking maybe it's better to uh, give it a little extra space on purpose and then shim it with washers because I also don't want it to be um, too tight or too loose in terms of how much it sticks out because that again this is where the ears for the master cylinder go on the other side and it's going to put a lot of stress on that because it's, it's plastic and uh, yeah I don't want to deal with it so that's kind of the idea here all right so here's where I'm at right now uh, I got the clutch pedal almost perfectly lined up with the brake to the point where I don't think I'm going to change that really so it does, I, I shouldn't have made this error, but I cut this bracket, right? 
and just kind of reshaped it because I think it was Tyler that told me that you're supposed to have this bottomed all the way out and that's what the clutch pedal sits against. Well, on my Malibu, which uses an N body, not a J body clutch assembly, it still has this same thing. And I was having issues where over time, if you were to like dump the clutch or do something, it'll just, that amount of force, I can probably demonstrate it here because it's old plastic. I guess, yeah, well, this one's still good, but I was having issues where over time, this would just pop out and then the Malibu pedal is different. The push rod doesn't attach like that. It pops in. It's like a ball and socket type of thing. And so the clutch pedal would pop out and I'd lose my clutch because this piece would go missing. So what I ended up doing here was I cut this and I reshaped it so that the actual plastic insert, not the sensor, would bottom out against this stopper on the pedal. Well, that's all good and dandy, but I didn't account for the fact that the firewall adds a little bit of thickness. And so now I'm in kind of a mess where I'm back to that point where it's bottoming out against, well, not necessarily the sensor, but the inside of the master cylinder. And then that puts pressure on this plastic piece. And I don't like that. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. It'll probably be fine. But the next thing I have to do, though, is I do have to trim a little bit off the back because I can't get it to go all the way in without, like, forcing it. So it's touching up against the firewall. It literally just needs like half an inch trimmed off of it. You see these welds are beautiful because I used a 7018 rod that sat in a moist storage place for like five years. And then I went back over it with a 6013. But hey, it's, it's solid. I've like hammered it and it's fine. Up there, I did just a 6013 rod. Those welds look like garbage because it's kind of hard to have that thin of a metal. It's kind of hard to uh, wrap the welds without melting the actual uh, pedal bracket for the clutch. Around the other end, the welds are actually pretty okay. But that was my, this is my mounting solution for the pedal. Just that. That's part of an alternator bracket off of a Buick Riviera. So, yeah, I gotta, I hate that I have to cut this. I really don't want to. I'm probably gonna do it in the car, to be honest. I'll just lay down a welding mat. Because I don't want to take this pedal out. It's, it's a pain in the ass. I like it where it's at. You know, it's not very far off from where I, you know, clutch and brake. It's, there's a slight difference, but it's not enough to bother me. It's, I've been in cars where from the factory they're off from each other. It's semi-trucks. Those are also, are, I'm kind of used to that kind of stuff. So, yeah. But I'm, it's coming along. It is finally coming along. Just not excited for when I have to grind that pedal piece off, but it's actually like I have three pedals in a Grand Prix. That's nuts to me. So at this point, it's just going to be tomorrow. I'm going to grind that piece off and then uh, be done with it, the pedal part. Well, actually, I want to look at some schematics to confirm it. But the plan is to wire this switch and this switch in series because if I understand correctly, this is the brake light switch right and this which is out of adjustment yikes um and then this one is the cruise control cancel switch this one is also a cruise control cancel switch so i want to wire them in series so if either one is open then cruise control shuts off because i don't want to have my cruise on go to press the clutch in and rev bomb the engine because i've done that on the malibu and it's not a fun experience so uh yeah that, that's what's going on right now, but <sighs> next part of this mess is the shifter and the cables, and once I have that part done, I'm ready to put this dash back together, which I can't wait. It's going to be like a big piece of motivation for me to have it all back together and work, like the dashboard working and everything, and then I can move on to the trans part of it, but I decided to uh, get this part done first because it's the hardest. So after much messing around... I've got my clutch pedal mounted here. Oh, that's not good. Go back. All right, here it is. And with the brake pedal up, it lines up just about perfect. I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. Uh, it's mounted in there pretty rigidly too. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, so that trick didn't work that well. But I'm honestly kind of tempted to just drive a self-tapper in just so it touches the tip of that uh, pedal when it's fully extended, if that makes sense. So it would just be there as a stopper. That's a problem for the future. 
Uh, now, before I put everything back together, I have to figure out a mounting situation for the shifter. And I'm also going to wire in the cruise control cancel switch in series with that cruise control cancel switch. The long one's the brake light switch, from what I understand. So, when I put those two in series, that should make it so that when I press the cruise, the or when I press the clutch, the cruise disengages. Because I want this to be like a... I want this to look like GM did it from the factory. I don't want anything hacked up or like, hey, that's aftermarket. No, I want it to be like completely stock looking. So, like to the point where I'm going to use this um, shift handle. I like it with the lockout for reverse. This thing is awesome. So, I mean, it's going to need a different boot, obviously, which sucks because it's... This kind of matches the quality and color of the other interior materials, but it is what it is. And this shifter isn't deep fried either. Like it might need a rebuild at one point, but it's definitely still usable. I might be wrong. Let's see how much play there is. Yeah, it's not that bad. I, I'll go buy a rebuild kit for it off AliExpress and we should be good. Yeah, it definitely needs it now that I look. That O-ring is toast. But it'll still be fine. I think that's just to dampen it so it doesn't like slam and make that clicking noise when you shift. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about this, to be honest. Because I know these two match up fine, but then you got this wiring harness in the way. My concern is that if I pull this out of the way, is that center console even going to fit right? And if it does, is the sharp plastic edge going to chafe the wire? So... I have a lot of messing around to do. Also, I have no clue where this CD came from. A Motown Christmas. Anyway. Yeah, I found uh, a lot of stuff in this car from the previous owners. And